All right, I wanted to give you a little update on the uh, my previous YouTube video, which was requesting some uh, wiring help for a uh, project, which you can see a different version of in front of you. Um, I submitted the video slash circuit diagram slash comments to the uh, Ask an Electrician subreddit, I believe is what it was called. And... Uh, <laughs> They, they had some complaints, but uh, they did answer my question. Um, fortunately slash unfortunately, I decided to go in a different direction. Uh, and instead of using the Craftsman uh, LED work light that I was using uh, to light up what I wanted to light up, uh, I decided to go with uh, NeoPixels. Uh, an 8x8 array of them to be specific um, as well as ditch the uh, electrical box which I was using before and uh, make this out of uh, polycarbonate so I have a drill press and a, a table saw and I you know this this is made from scratch uh, I joined the pieces together using some uh, acetone based uh, PVC pipe fusing uh, I don't know what you would call it, but uh, it's really nasty stuff. You use it to join together um, PVC pipes uh, for construction. So I built a drainage system outside, and that's what I use. Uh, works really well on uh, on uh, polycarbonate. So, uh, yep, join those together. So let me show you uh, what this thing is. Um, you've already seen the NeoPixels down here. Uh, I have those uh, wired up into the Raspberry Pi up here as well as a webcam that I had lying around um, and uh, a physical toggle switch, um, which is something I'd like. You'll notice that there's a cool little rainbow boot off sequence uh, as well as a boot on sequence. Uh, everything is controlled through uh, SSH, well, controlled through the Raspberry Pi, but you can see I've SSH'd uh, into the Raspberry Pi here, uh, and this is the actual code uh, written in Python that controls the uh, LEDs. And uh, this was adapted from just a basic um, piece of code, uh, I think from some other YouTube video. I can try and link to it, but you know, I made some adjustments. Um, actually, the code that I, I had gotten it from didn't even work, so. Uh, I think the guy who made it was British, uh, and the reason it didn't work was because he uh, spelled color two different ways. I think he tried to adapt it to an American audience and just didn't change all the variables. So it was spelled color in certain places and color in others. Um, and then the whole rainbowy thing was from another, I don't fucking know, from something else. So, um, yeah, it, it does everything I want. Um, it also is running Octopi. Uh, which you can see here. Uh, it's not hooked up to the 3D printer right now, obviously. That is over there. Um, but you can see that the webcam is working. It gets a lovely view of the, the table. There we are. Um, and so uh, this is actually what is going to attach to the, um, I guess, flue lever in my fireplace here. and uh, this thing. So just gonna screw it on here. It's gonna sit up here. Power cable's gonna go over the spools down back here uh, where there will be a power strip. And then the USB that attaches to the 3D printer uh, will go right like that. So this black tube will hide the cable and then it will just go up there. So hopefully, since everything is black, uh, you won't really notice that it's attached to stuff at the base. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, it works nicely. I guess, uh, I don't know, I just kind of freestyled this thing. <laughs> There's not really a schematic or anything for it. Um, but polycarbonate, man, you can do some neat stuff with it. Um, 
I have been leaving this thing on for quite a while just to make sure that uh, you know there's no problem with the uh, acetone uh, fusing compound uh, sort of giving up at a higher temperature. Uh, these LEDs do get pretty hot, not too terribly so. It's not as hot as a you know normal uh, filament light bulb, uh, but still you know. One wants to make sure everything is going to be okay. Um, I looked online, and the LEDs, I believe, get up to 80 Celsius, and the melting point, or I guess maybe not the melting point, but the point at which the structure of polycarbonate becomes weak is, I think, at like 140 Celsius. So there's some definite wiggle room. Um, I just wasn't sure if the 80 degrees Celsius was the point at which the lights... Uh, would not function correctly or the the temperature that they can get up to. It wasn't very clear in the uh, technical documentation. Um, yeah, probably do another video once this uh, is hooked up in the fireplace and everything is ready to go. Um, I think it's pretty neat. I can probably put the code uh, online if people are interested. Um, oh, another piece of code I'll probably add is um, that the light will automatically turn on uh, when I view it through the webcam. I'm assuming that's something I can do. Uh, it looks like Octopi has a uh, ability to to allow you to inject script. Um, if it doesn't, I can probably write something custom uh, using maybe Cron, uh, Crone, Kronos. It's short for, short for chronography or chronograph, but anyways, the Linux Chrome, uh, what would you call it, daemon, that lets you uh, time things. Um, so I could have a time, eh, I don't know, probably wouldn't want it timed. I could have something, uh, a thread running, a process running on another thread probably that would uh, start when I booted the system and would just kind of listen uh, for... Uh, my connection to the server, right? So when it detected someone looking at OctoPrint, um, or actually more specifically looking at the webcam of OctoPrint, uh, it would automatically turn on the light. Uh, also, this thing is smart enough to know the position of the switch, which is nice. So if I were to uh, turn it off, um, here, let me show you. So right now, clearly the switch is on. Uh, you can see that I have it tell us that it's on. Uh, but if I were to kill the program um, and have it left in the on position, uh, when you booted it up again, it would recognize that it was already on and would automatically turn on the light. So another thing I adapted in the program was there was no way to uh, gracefully uh, exit. So uh, in the program I adapted this from, <laughs> when you when you close the program, uh, it would just throw an error. Uh, and with this one, if, if you exit the program, uh, it gracefully uh, unloads. So let me show you. Let me stop the program here. Gracefully exiting program, light turned off. Uh, and now if we start it up again, the light should automatically boot on, and it does. So uh, it's nice. I'm really happy with this. Um, I think it'll work out nicely. So let me know if, uh, I don't know, have any suggestions. Hopefully this thing doesn't overheat. But uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a definite learning experience. Uh, oh, something else I'm quite proud of here is the fact that uh, both the NeoPixels and the uh, Raspberry Pi are all powered off the same plug. Um, so to do that, I needed to order a, uh, what is it, it's 5 volt, 10 amp power supply off Amazon. And uh, it's because these NeoPixels, right, uh, I think the array can consume up to 3.5 amps. I think the Raspberry Pi is like uh, 2 amps maybe. Um, but anyways, both are 5 volt. And uh, I wanted to run the NeoPixels on their max brightness, so that's why I decided to do, uh, you know, a, a pretty beefy power supply. 
But yeah, so they're both running off the same the same circuit. Uh, so one plug, two devices, uh, and it's working very well. And uh, yeah, okay. I think that's all I got. <laughs>